turning challenges into success. This has become a hallmark of SpaceX's journey. Flight 6 is yet another testament to this philosophy. While this mission is regarded as a success, particularly for the spacecraft, a few issues arose during the process. However, in true SpaceX fashion, these challenges present opportunities to further enhance the capabilities of their groundbreaking vehicle. So what exactly went wrong with the spacecraft during Flight 6? And how does SpaceX plan to address these issues to strengthen their colossal starship even further? Let's explore the details in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Flight 6 marks another significant milestone in SpaceX's mission to bring humanity closer to Mars. Building on the success of previous flights, SpaceX once again demonstrated its ability to achieve two-stage landings. While some debates persist around Super Heavy's performance, the progress with ship was undeniable. This time, instead of the explosive aftermath seen in Flight 5, only minor fires were observed after landing, a clear step forward. However, challenges remain, and these should be viewed as opportunities for further refinement and innovation. One notable issue during Flight 6 involved Starship S-31 undergoing severe thermal stress, resulting in deformation and discoloration on its surface. The deformation was particularly evident during the ascent. At T plus 47 seconds, everything appeared normal. But by 49 seconds, dents began to form and became increasingly visible as the flight progressed. SpaceX later shared images on social media that highlighted these deformations more clearly. Discoloration, on the other hand, was more apparent during re-entry and descent. Without the protective heat shields in some areas, portions of the spacecraft turned a blue-purple hue, a telltale sign of overheating. This discoloration was most noticeable when sunlight reflected off the affected areas near the end of the descent, and SpaceX's post-flight images confirmed these observations. So, what caused these issues? Before the flight, SpaceX deliberately removed over 2,000 heat tiles from S-31 to test its resilience and to prepare for the installation of future landing support systems. Additionally, the descent angle was adjusted to be steeper than usual, subjecting the spacecraft to more extreme conditions. During re-entry, temperatures often exceed 1,500 degrees Celsius. Without adequate heat shield protection and with a sharper re-entry angle, the stainless steel hull of S-31, made from 304L alloy, was exposed to severe stress. This steel, while durable, has a melting point below re-entry temperatures, leading to deformation and overheating. Another contributing factor may have been oxidation. The friction generated during atmospheric re-entry, combined with the high oxygen content of the atmosphere, likely caused the chromium, nickel, and carbon in the steel alloy to oxidize, further altering the material's color and structure. While these issues didn't compromise the mission's overall success, they present challenges for future iterations. SpaceX plans to install additional systems in areas affected by these stresses, and the durability of those components will be critical. The forward flap's performance in Flight 4 serves as a reminder of the vulnerability of protruding systems under extreme conditions. Moreover, thermal shock likely played a significant role in the observed changes. At liftoff, the ship's temperature is extremely low due to the presence of liquid oxygen and methane. As it ascends and experiences intense atmospheric friction, temperatures rise dramatically, peaking during re-entry. This is followed by a sudden drop when the ship lands in the ocean. These rapid temperature fluctuations challenge the structural integrity of even the most advanced materials. These stresses likely contributed to the post-landing failure of S-31's fairing, which exploded after landing despite the vehicle touching down safely, as Musk later revealed. SpaceX's relentless pursuit of innovation continues to drive Starship's evolution, with a key focus now turning toward crucial upgrades that will ensure the spacecraft's readiness for future missions, including journeys to Mars. Among these, the heat shield stands out as a vital area of development, safeguarding the spacecraft during the intense heat of atmospheric re-entry. No matter how advanced the materials used for Starship become, the heat shield will remain an indispensable element of its design. Fortunately, recent flights have shown encouraging progress in this area. Recovery images from these missions reveal that the new heat shield tiles are performing exceptionally well. 
These tiles, which were first implemented on prototypes like S-30 and possibly S-31, reflect improvements SpaceX has made following earlier flights. After Flight 4, Musk noted that the updated heat shields were twice as strong, incorporating an ablative layer to enhance durability. Furthermore, the frequency of tiles detaching during the flight has significantly decreased, showcasing SpaceX's iterative approach to problem-solving and design enhancement. However, the current heat shield system is not the end goal. As SpaceX transitions to Starship V2, more advanced upgrades are expected to further bolster its capabilities. These enhancements could debut as soon as Flight 7, offering a glimpse of a more resilient and efficient system. During the Flight 6 livestream, SpaceX hinted at tests for a new generation of heat shields, specifically designed for Mars missions. One of the biggest challenges remains creating a fully reusable heat shield. Musk has described this as the biggest technology challenge remaining for Starship. Among the potential solutions being considered is metallic shielding, which could be supplemented by eulage gas or liquid film cooling. This innovative system involves a layer of inert gases or liquids creating a protective barrier between the spacecraft's surface and the extreme heat of reentry. Compared to ceramic tiles, metallic heat shields offer superior durability, resisting cracking, and damage caused by thermal stress. However, this durability comes at the cost of increased mass, a trade-off SpaceX will need to address. Cooling systems are another promising avenue for improving thermal protection. Materials like methane or water could be used to regulate temperature and absorb excess heat, mitigating the risks of thermal shock. By reducing sudden temperature changes and heat spikes, these systems could provide an additional layer of protection for Starship during its most vulnerable phases of flight. However, each coolant material presents its own set of challenges, requiring meticulous testing and refinement to determine the optimal solution. A more immediate strategy to reduce thermal shock and enhance Starship's reusability involves shifting landings from the ocean to the Mechazilla Tower. Ocean landings, while effective for early testing, complicate recovery efforts and can expose the spacecraft to rapid temperature changes that stress its components. In contrast, catching Starship with the Mechazilla arm would enable faster refurbishment and a shorter turnaround for future launches. What are your thoughts on SpaceX's recent advancements and the challenges they are working to overcome? Share your thoughts in the comments section down below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay informed about SpaceX's groundbreaking progress. Now that we've concluded the Starship updates, let's shift our focus to the Falcon 9 and its recent NRO mission, NROL-126. This mission launched at 3.10 a.m. Eastern from SLC-4E in California, carrying payloads for the National Reconnaissance Office. It included 20 Starlink satellites and an unspecified number of government satellites, likely including two of SpaceX's Starshield satellites. The mission highlights SpaceX's critical role in supporting both commercial and government satellite deployments. For security reasons, the live stream of the launch was delayed until 46 seconds after liftoff. Later, SpaceX shared on social media, Falcon 9 launches the National Reconnaissance Office's NROL-126 mission and 20 Starlink satellites to orbit. This mission marks the fifth in the NRO's proliferated architecture of imaging satellites, a series jointly developed by SpaceX and Northrop Grumman. The previous four missions launched earlier this year in May, June, September, and October. Together, these efforts aim to build the largest government-run satellite constellation in history. Deployment of this constellation began in mid-2023 using a variety of rockets, including ULA's Delta IV Heavy and Atlas V and Rocket Lab's Electron. However, SpaceX's Falcon 9 has since taken the lead and will likely remain the backbone of future launches. Currently, three more NROL missions are scheduled for December of 2024, emphasizing the importance of the Falcon 9 in meeting the government's satellite deployment needs. Its reliability and cost-effectiveness make it the preferred option for missions under the National Security Space Launch Program. The Falcon 9 also achieved several milestones with this mission. It marked the first flight for Booster B-1088, the 11th successful landing of the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship, and the 377th overall landing for SpaceX. Most notably, it was the 100th successful launch from Pad SLC-4E in California, a meaningful achievement given the ongoing challenges SpaceX faces with local regulations regarding rocket launches in the region. 
As 2024 nears its close, there's still time for SpaceX to set even more records. With their impressive momentum, it will be exciting to see what milestones they achieve before the year ends. In any case, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.